Hello, hello, hello guys and welcome back to Joe's Ventures and today we can see we've got the dev diary for January 2023 so kind of the first month back from uh, holidays and everything and I'm uh, getting back into development of Prehistoric Kingdom and we've got actually quite a cool assortment of things going on today which I am quite excited to talk about so let's start we have got here welcome to January's development update so, after a wonderful holiday break, the team returned mid-January to continue working on Prehistoric Kingdom. In this time, it turns out we crossed a rather exciting milestone. We've shipped 100,000 units uh, since launching in April last year. So, a little under a year, but you've already got 100,000 units. So, that's pretty good. So, that's, a, that's really, really good, especially for an uh, indie game like this. Um, with the ongoing support, we want to make 2023 a more consistent and even bigger year for us, targeting meaning meaningful gameplay um, additions and improvement to our usual um, sprinkling of modular pieces and creativity. Thank you so much for everyone who has supported us so far. To start the year off, let's dive straight into the development process and take a look at some of the things we've been cooking up behind the scenes. So here's the state of development, uh, here where we're at. So, good news! The next patch is almost ready to drop. This one's more focused on uh, addressing various issues found in the last update, including a bunch of bug fixes, as well as huge performance improvements during uh, night time, thanks to our new light imposters. Uh, imposers? Imposters, I didn't say that. Um, though this patch does address some trouble spots with visitor navigation, we're going to continue working on the aspect for guests. Seeing them dance on tables and disregard common decency is humorous, but this is a side effect of modular pathfinding that requires a more complex solution. Uh, simply uh, removing walkable areas above a certain height or steepness can introduce a number of knockoff effects, which would make player, some player builds inaccessible to guests. And while we continue to research and develop a robust solution to combat this, uh, in the meantime, we'd like to thank you for tolerating our hooligans. <laughs> so um, that's just uh, game development sometimes. Sometimes you just got to figure it out how it works. And moving on from that, we've got uh, new gameplay additions. Uh, the research system is almost done. We'll be shipping it out as soon as it's ready for release. And uh, in the next update, or after the next update. So you can see placeholder values and numbers here. So you can see... Uh, research there. A lot of these are placeholders, as it says here, placeholder values and numbers. So, a lot of these will be kind of different things you research, and there'll be a research tree. So you go and try and figure it out. Pretty cool. This is research there, incubation spe speed, things like that. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Throughout the year, we'll be introducing new types of items, modulars, and mechanics to expand upon the initial selection of researchables. And this is a system we want to grow and foster over time, uh, which is exploring the progression of challenge mode, evolving the progression of challenge mode, and the game expands during early access. So this is really basic at the moment, but as the game adds more things and more things to unlock, it's going to become a very big tree that it changes over time, so that's really cool. And after the uh, research tree is released, we'll be shifting most of our attention to the animals. There is a lot of work to be done in polishing and developing them further with uh, new features. So let's talk about that. And that's what everyone wants to talk about. So we're going to have a look at that. So what's in the pipeline? So we've got the animals. In 2023, we want to do a lot uh, more for our animals, including new gameplay features alongside a number of exciting species. The upcoming roster has a great mix of familiar and less celebrated faces, highlighting the diversity of prehistoric life on this planet. To start, let's take a sneak peek at two animals coming this year. If we were told you too much about them, it might spoil the theme for our next big update. We cannot wait for you uh, to read all your speculation. So here we've got one here and one here. So two different species. This It's got hair, could be a mammal. Uh, mammal with long hair, something like that, and then you have something with scales, that could always be anything with scales, like a dinosaur, or a large reptile, most likely a dinosaur, but um, that's very, very interesting. And um, beyond updated locomotion and new ways for animals to interact, uh, well, for example, herding, chasing, playing, that'll be coming, we also plan to tackle everybody's favourite Hollywood moment, 
animal breakouts, so that's something that'll be interesting. These escape will cause your park ranking to plummet and spark fear in guests around the park, and we'll have more information about breakouts in the future. So that's kind of like consequences uh, for not maintaining your park properly, because if you don't have a maintained proper park, you will have the dinosaurs getting out and running around. And things that make the dinosaurs feel more alive, like herding and chasing and fleeing, similar kind of thing to like Planet Zoo, JPOG, JWE type stuff. I think that'd be quite cool. And we've got here genetic mutations, which is another cool thing coming. So you can see the two pictures here before. We can see that with the hair. And then we can see with the um, scales there. I forgot that you click on them. But we've got genetic mutations anyway. Genetic mutations are coming to Prehistoric Kingdom in 2023. The team has also developed a semi-procedural approach that allows us to create albino, melanistic, and leucistic variants all through shader. So you can see here, this is a good example. This is an albino and melanistic Tyrannosaurus. So um, just to quickly explain what those means, albino is an animal that has like pretty much no pigment in their skin. And sometimes it can lead to having red eyes because they uh, um, have no pigment in their eyes, which is quite interesting. Though it doesn't happen to all, sometimes they will have other mutations related to that. That means they have different colored eyes, uh, but that's just a general rule. So that's albino. Melanistic is an animal that has a lot of melanin, or, or excess of melanin that makes them near or completely black. You have, will notice that you can still see the patterns on that T-Rex. Some melanistic, like leopards and tigers and stuff like that, they will have um, still, like, kind of, if you get the light right, you'll still be able to see their patterns because it's not all 100% the same, but sometimes you just get completely black. But um, there's a lot of variation within that. You can get, like, hypermelanistic or um, pseudomelanistic, where there's, like, the stripes or patterns on them are just extra black. So this is something I think that could be really greatly expanded and could be something interesting, so that's cool. And that's why they've probably added into the shader, as we'll get into, that allows a lot of variation. So um, we've got a huge benefit of this approach that every skin can mutate so rather than using generic albino or melanistic textures we've set up a powerful system that can be both memory efficient and highly variable so because it's procedural you can see the procedural nature of this means there's an astonishing high um, degree of individuality and randomness so you can see even in this t-rex here um, we'll get through there Note the extreme differences in brightness, color, and pattern visibility in these two albino T-Rexes. So you can see here, these guys are both albino. They both don't have much pigment. But you can see the um, patterns in the uh, Rex on the right is a lot more noticeable than the one on the left. As you can see here, a little bit darker here. You can see that uh, individual changes. So even though they are just melanistic albino there's a lot of variation within that so you could probably create these like um if you've seen tigers that have like really really big stripes and almost looks like it's called a pseudo melanistic like they still have some stuff but there's just the stripes are really really wide and really really like big and it kind of looks a little weird or well, well, it looks cool but it looks weird compared com compared to a normal tiger so you could kind of have that within this procedural system and then you can have more variation within that. So each albino and each um, melanistic or each leucistic animal is inherently different and unique, which is really, really cool and helps create like individuality to its characters. And then you also get the obviously the changes in size and uh, hue and things like that, which is pretty cool. And the effect of this variation is especially present in leucistic specimens. So leucistic is kind of the in-between. It's, it's loss of some pigment, but not all. So um, that's kind of the thing. And also adds a unique splash of uh, shading to uh, otherwise familiar skins. You can see here, kind of, uh, they refer to cookies and cream. You can kind of see that here. It's bright, but you can see the still got the like grayish to blackish pattern on there, which is really, really cool. And yeah, that allows for so much variation, things like that. It'd be cool to have things like piebald as well. That would be very interesting. Uh, there's all sorts of different skin mutations you can get, like Vintilago, uh, as I mentioned, pseudomelanism, um, heuristic, where they're like, um, well, there's all excess, uh, excess red pigment, so you create these really red dinosaurs. Uh, you see that a lot in like cats and um, things like that. You even see like golden variants, you could say. 
uh, in like Wildebeest uh, or Moon Bears is a good example, like a blonde one. I think that could be a really, really cool thing. And then you could also uh, put it on different species as well. Um, well, oh, a perfect example of pseudomelanism is king cheetahs. They have, uh, even though they have spots, they have like cheetahs normally have spots. They even have stripes. So yeah, that's a great example of a pseudomelanistic animal. But you get uristic and things like that, where there's excess uh, excess red pigment. So really, it's like a whole spattering of different variations that people could add, and they could add into prehistoric kingdom. And then you have the specific morphs and things like that, which is really really cool. So you can see here we got the leucistic T-Rex. So some art is still technically required for the system to work as intended across all our current species. So genetic mutations will be arriving later in this year and stay tuned for more information. That's pretty cool. But we've got another cool thing here. Um, we've got some guest art updates. So for the last few months, we've been working on designing or working to design a more appealing and coherent or cohesive art style for our guests. We sat down with our concept artist Ida to talk a little about the process and what we ended up settling on. So you can see the art here. Um, you can see it's a little bit more um, stylized but not quite as stylized as something like Planet Zoo and not quite as realistic as JDB. It's got a little bit of stylization just to kind of like not have that uncanny valley effect but I still think it looks quite nice. It still fits within the game. So um, the basic idea was the guests should be pleasant and fun to look at. They need to appear interesting and diverse when looking at them in a crowd from afar uh, and then you're trying to manage other aspects of your park. And we also want the guests to look expressive and be able to emote in a way that's easy for the player to interpret. So kind of like showing gameplay without um, uh, having to look through menus and things like that. Uh, I tried out a lot of different styles from realistic to very stylized just to get a sense of what would fit in game with the dinosaurs and assets we already have. We ended up settling with something in between that that probably make the guests feel way more lively while still fitting in the world. So you can see they're a little bit stylized, but um, still have a uh, realistic like look to them. They just aren't hyper real because obviously Uncanny Valley is something that happens a lot, and we don't want that. And plus, it helps the game like look nice as it time goes on. And um, Below you can see here is a concept sheet showcasing our male and female presenting faces as well as some of the outfits. Depending on which uh, map your uh, guests are playing on, uh, you, you are playing on, guests will enter the park wearing clothes best suited that environment. And um, so you can see here there's hoodies and jackets, things like that. That's pretty cool. And uh, please note this is a concept sheet for our 3D artists for reference. The guests below do not have any hair. We'll be remo uh, removing all ha handlebar mustaches from the game. Not sorry. Now that's quite sad. We want beards and mustaches, things like that. I think that would be pretty cool. But um, we can see here some concept arts for male faces with some different ethnicities, things like that. You know, you're Asian and um, and black and things like that. So really, all of that. Really, really cool. And then you have uh, different uh, colors and uh, shirts and clothes for different weathers and things like that you can see you got your hoodie on and you got your uh, swazi on all that you know jeans all that and the guest overhaul will also be coming later this year alongside new innovation uh, animations and audio to truly at, um, enhance the crowd crowds for prehistoric kingdom and the number of interactions uh, like sitting on benches throwing uh, trash away and of course animations when using kiosks or seeing their favorite animal are on the radar so a really bunch of cool new interactions so that'd be fun like imagine them sitting on benches i really hope they don't throw them on the ground because that that'll be a mess for me to clean up and animations for them using stuff would be quite cool as well here we've got community spotlight just to round off uh this was one i found on facebook i really love this this is extinct bricks so this is the pk feathered packy rhinosaurus made in lego and i think it's come out wonderfully it's really awesome another one here by lucy257 we can see this like egyptian or like greek ruins more greek ruins i'd probably say uh really really nice looks like you'd, you'd find this like athens or rome pretty interesting uh, and then we've got here, last but certainly not least, by Blue Raptor. This is from uh, Dinotopia. There's like an image with a treehouse, and there's a couple of Brachiosauruses there, and a little, little dinosaurs next to a lake. And um, I think they recreated it rather beautifully here. Big, big fan. 
So um, thank you for reading January's Dev Diary. As always, uh, we will continue to uh, release our monthly devlogs or dev diaries, keeping the community informed and up to date when we're headed and what you can expect to see. So if you'd like to provide feedback or report bugs during your experience, please head to uh, the official Discord or use the in-game reporting tool for bugs. And for now, please enjoy the next update and we'll see you in February with the latest dev diary. Until next time, the PK team. So. A really really awesome update we've got uh, the albino melanistic things to cover and the uh, changes in the art style for the guests and then also some up, uh, evidence of some closer updates like uh, changes in research so that'll be really really fun to look at so um yeah i think the melanistic or the uh, um, the skin system for producing like melanistic things like that could greatly be expanded if they want to create like heuristics and then maybe particular morphs for different species uh, King Cheetahs or equivalents and things like that. I think it'd be really, really awesome. So, um, yeah, I think this would be a great place to end the video. So, I uh, really, really, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe. Always remember get the little bell icon to get notified of anything. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys like and subscribe, and bye bye.